Okay, so now that we have um, an equation for our line of best fit, let's get an equation uh, or let's figure out what our least squares regression is. So let me first explain to you what a least squares regression is. Um, if we go back and we pull up our calculator and we look at our um, at our graph, and again, I'm going to draw the line at what I'm calling the line of best fit. Um, remember, it's I'm not drawing with a ruler here, so it's not, it's not going to be very easy to do this, but um, just pretend that it's nice and straight and perfect and and really a line of best fit. So let's say I let's say I draw that as my line of best fit. And we found the equation of it. It was the y equals 3.67 minus 108.01. Um, we're calling that our line of best fit. Well, notice that I have dots that are not on the line of best fit. So what we want to figure out is, see, there's a distance here between this dot and the line and this dot and the line. And what we want to do, the least squares regression is going to help us find the line of best fit that eliminates as much of that space as we can. Now, the reason why it's quite least squares regression, remember when we did standard deviation and we have the issue of going to the right of the mean and to the left of the mean, um, you end up with positive and negative numbers because of the direction, but we really don't care about the direction, whether it's to the left or to the right. We just want to know how far away it is. So we square it to get rid of the negative numbers. Well, the same thing happens here. If it's below the line, it's negative distance, and it's if it's above the line, it's a positive distance, but we don't really care. We just we want to know how far away from our line of best fit is it. And what we really want to do is we want to find the line of best fit that has the smallest, the least squares regression. So we want to try to get that number as small as we can to find our least squares regression. So um, in order to do that, we have a formula. So let me write the formula down for you. The formula for least squares regression looks like this. It's y hat is b1 x plus b0. Um, now, that's great because you're like, I don't even know what any of that stuff is. Um, the reason why it's a y hat is we have to remember y hat is a predictor value. Um, anytime you have a hat on something, it means you're going to you're predicting something. Um, so our y hat shows that this is a predicted y value based off of this line. B1 is the slope of our least squares regression. So basically the best line of fit that we can make. The B1 is the slope of that and you find it by R times S sub Y S sub X and then our B naught that'll be the Y intercept of our line of our least squares regression is comes from Y bar minus B1 X bar. All right, so you really know what all these things are already, but we haven't seen each other in a while and you may have forgotten. So let's talk about it for a second. Our R value, that's your linear correlation coefficient. Um, and we got that from our calculator on this actual problem of what, two weeks ago now? <laughs> so I'll give it to you in just a minute or we'll, we'll look it up again um, since our since I put the data in the in the calculator. Um, we, we learned how to do it by hand. And then um, we also did it in our calculator. So if you'll remember, um, there's a formula for it. And remember, I told you, I'll give you the formulas. If you were to have to do it by hand, but you don't necessarily have to do it by hand because remember, if you turn your stats diagnostics on in your calculator, the R value will show. Then we have S, S sub Y and S sub X. Those are standard deviations. That's the standard deviation of y and that's the standard deviation of x. We also got those from our calculator. Remember when we do our um, stat and arrow over to calc and we do our two variable statistics, it gives us our standard deviation for x and y. It also gives us our x bar and our y bar, which are the mean of x and the mean of y. So you, you can find all of those in your calculator. And then we can just plug them in. Then af after we have found those data values, it's, it's just plugging 
into the formulas. So um, let me erase off my calculator. I'm going to leave up the formulas, but let me erase this stuff off the calculator so that we can go get those data values. So the first thing is, don't forget, if you have second plus 712 on your calculator or at this point, your calculator has been off for so long, I, you might just want to go ahead and check before you even try um, to see if your stat diagnostics are still on. So because they have to be on in order for you to get a linear correlation coefficient. So to do that, remember, you hit mode arrow to the second page. Where it says next and then right here. So mine are turned off, so I need to turn them on. Go down to stat diagnostics and turn those on. And then if you haven't already put the this data into your um, calculator, let me scroll up on this page here. Ah, actually, I'll move it so you can see it. There you go. If you haven't already put those in your calculator, you go ahead and do that so that um, that you can go through this process also because it's been a while since you've done it. So, um, all right. So put those in and I'm going to go ahead and mine are already in, in stat edit. Then we're going to hit stat and we got, we're going to have to do two separate things. I need to go to stat calc to get my standard deviations and my means. So let's do that first. Let's do stat calc, um, two variable stats because I have an X and a Y column. Make sure your lists are correct. I, this, this time, um, I don't know why. Whatever I did before, I had a frequency list, but I don't have a frequency list now, so I'm going to clear that out. Um, and I'm just going to hit calculate. All right, so my X bar is 101. Let me get a different color here. Um, no. All right, so my X bar. is 101.875. My um, standard deviation of x is 2. Point, let's do 2.295. So that's I did three decimals here, 2.295. And then we're going to air to the second page to find our data for our y's. All right, so there's y bar. So Y bar is 266.75 and standard deviation of Y is 7.741. I guess I could put a zero at the end of this so that I'm going three decimal places on everything. And then the next thing I need, I need my R value. I need my linear correlation coefficient. So to do that, I've got to do, again, stat calc, but this time I'm doing a linear regression. I've turned my stat diagnostics on. I, I don't care about storing or anything. All I'm after is that R value. And my R value was 0.93869. So let's go three decimal places because that's what I've gone on these things. So my R value is 0.939. Okay, so now I'm just plugging numbers into formulas. So I have, I've got to find my slope in order to find my B1. I'm going to do my R value. So my 0.939 times uh, my uh, standard deviation of Y over standard devi deviation of X. Uh, a lot like, I mean, this is slope. Remember, Y's are over X's. So it's still rise over run. So standard deviation of Y is... 7.741 over my standard deviation of X, 2.295. So I'm gonna plug that into my calculator and that's gonna give me my slope or my B1 value. So 0.939. I use my fraction bar whenever I can and for whatever reason, why did that not let me do that? 0.939 alpha. There we go. I must have just, oh, I didn't push multiply. 0.9. There we go. Times alpha y equals, I guess I just got ahead of myself a second ago. Um, 7.741 over 2.295. That gives me 3.167.
All right, and then my next step is to find my B naught. So I have to do my um, my Y mean, which I, I can actually plug this straight into the calculator. So I'm going to do 266.75 minus my B1, 3.167 times, or I could have actually gone up there and grabbed that. That probably would have been smarter instead of rounding. And then my X bar is 101.875. And that gives me neg uh, minus 55.888. That is my B naught. And I can plug it in and I will have my least squares regression line. So Y hat is going to be my B1 value, which was 3.167x minus 55.888. That is my least squares regression line. All right, that we just that's finding our least squares regression line by hand.